One thing you learned from putting. What did we learn? One thing. Other than follow through. Follow through. Everybody said follow through. Give me something else. <laughs> Weight transfer. Yes, that's a huge one. That's a huge one. All right. Also awesome. Perfect. Practice, right? We got to get to the practice screen with putting. Muscle um, memory, too. I think for me, like last week at World Championships, I put in so much extra work on my muscle memory to where like there's going to be times on the course where your brain kind of fights against you. You know, you're like, oh, this is for bogey or whatever it is. And like <laughs> having that muscle memory and that rhythm will help just kind of eliminate a little bit of that. And like sometimes you'll still hit the putt because your body knew what to do when the brain's kind of working against you. But, yeah, that's true. I've yeah. definitely experienced that. Um, all right. Backhand. Does anybody not backhand right now at all? No. Good. Oh, no. Okay, you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So if you have any questions at any point, if anybody has any questions at any point, please stop us and ask, raise a hand, whatever you guys want to do. All right. The first thing I like to work on is grip. So everybody grab a disc. Put your bags down. Grab a disc. Cool. Okay. So there's two different grips that I really see people use, two main grips I see people use. Uh, first one is the power grip, right? So. The power grip is wrapping all four of your fingers around. The main problem I see are people put their knuckles against the flight plate, okay? Now, you know you do this if you can't see your fingernails. Can't, I can't see my fingernails, right? So the way to fix that is we wanna have our pads against the rim and I can see my fingernails. See that? Any questions about that? Anybody struggling with that? If you're having problems yep. lining it up, one thing I see a lot of people do that helps is you put it in your palm and you put it between your pointer finger and your middle finger, okay? See that? Now, these three fingers on the bottom wrap around. I can still see my fingernails, right? Now this finger just kind of comes up top, same position, okay? That should help you get it in the crest of your palm, make sure that the pads of your fingers are on the rim and you can see your fingernails. Did you have a grip question over there? No, I think I... Okay, awesome. Okay. Right. Um, cool. This is a comfortability thing too. So some people have three fingers. He's just re revealed to me that Aaron Gossage uses two. Yeah, he I can't believe it. Back in two finger power but that's grip. crazy. It's a lot of stress on his middle finger as he gets older. He might reconsider, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. There's that one, and then there's the fan grip, which is essentially, instead of putting your fingers up against the rim, you just have them fanned out, and this allows more surface area for us to control uh, the angle and the spin, okay? That's used for more up shots. It's really not used that much for driving. You can if you like it. I do know some people who do that, uh, but they lose a little bit of distance in my opinion. I think I see some, some taller, bigger-handed players kind of go with the fan grip for a lot of their shots, but mostly I see it used in myself I use it mainly for like my putter shots, my putter up shots, where I want to control the spin, control the angle, and have it land soft. Most other things I'm throwing the power grip though. Awesome. Any questions about that? Cool. Okay. So try and spread out just a little bit. You don't need that much room. We're not throwing, but I do want you to have like your own little bubble. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing I like to work on is footwork. The reason we want to work on footwork is if our footwork is not correct, our upper body has to make up for it in some sort of way. And usually it doesn't. So our throw is usually off, okay? Either we lose power or we lose accuracy, all right? So we wanna to get to a point where we don't have to think about our footwork. Um, I don't teach a run up, especially with people who start. I feel that the faster you run up, the easier it is to mess it up, okay? So right now we start slow, we start methodical. If you watch Connor play, he does a three or four step and it's very slow and then it's very smooth and then boom, the disc comes out um, because his timing is correct. So. The correct footwork that I like to teach is if my target is Connor, I want to set up perpendicular to him. Now again, this is not for power, this is more for accuracy. So you guys can do this with me if you'd like, if you don't, if, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I line up perpendicularly to uh, Connor. My first step is very simple. It's out in front of me. It's about shoulder width apart, but I just want to make sure that the angle of my foot is still perpendicular to him, okay? Because that's where, that's where I'm walking towards, that's where my target is. The X step, we, is essentially the same thing. We want it to be perpendicular to our target still. The reason I emphasize this is a lot of times what I see is people go heel first and now they've just prematurely closed off their hips, okay? And I'll explain to you why that's bad in a second. So if we land this foot successfully perpendicular to our target, 
our last step, we either want it to be rotated in a little bit or still perpendicular target. What we want to stay away from is opening it up, okay? And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> you guys can do this with me here. This foot comes back like this. This foot opens up here. I see this a lot. I see this a lot where our toes are pointed out. So go ahead and get into this position with me, okay? As best you can. Now, try and rotate your hips. Probably feels like you just woke up and you slept wrong. And you're, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really tight in here, right? We don't really have a lot of room. I can only get back to here. Now, all I want you to do is rotate on your heels and bring your, bring your toes in. Now try and rotate. A lot of extra room, right? And I can show you in real time what that, what that causes. So if my feet are rotated out, I can, I can get the disc back to here. I can't rotate farther than that. Bring my feet in. Now I can get the disc back here and I have all this extra room to be able to get energy into the disc, okay? I see that so often. So it's very simple. When you're watching Netflix or whatever you do in your own home, just walk these steps out. Get this muscle memory down. If you can get this down and not have to think about it, it's a huge weight off your mind and it helps you set up, bring that, bring that foot in. We wanna make sure that this foot does not rotate out. We'd rather it be more closed off. Okay, so that we can brace and then twist off of this. Okay, the more that, open we are, the less range of motion our hip, our hips, which are a little ball joint, have. So if we can keep them closed, then they can open up and they still have a lot of their ability to add our power to our shot. And our legs are going to be the biggest muscle group in the body, obviously. So we want those hips to allow us to rotate it, the legs into the body. Absolutely. Um, there's another reason why we want to be closed off, and I'll explain that when we get to the actual throw. Okay, so. The next thing we can go over is the timing of the, we don't like the term reach back, but like leaving the disc behind in a sense. So when we get to our X step, I like to keep the disc in the middle of my body somewhere here. We don't want it all over the place. We want it to be here because we only want it to go from here to here, right? That's it. So the timing is as this foot comes forward, your hips and your shoulders rotate backwards and your arm comes back with it right there. See that? As my foot lands, I get to the peak of my reach back, okay? That's a little bit tougher of a concept for some people, and it's something that you can also work on in your living room, okay? You can work on it anywhere, just making sure you get that timing correct. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I think also another thing uh, going with, with the not really reaching it back is kind of the head placement's also important. The backhand's such a visual shot. A lot of people prefer forehand because they can just look at the target the whole time, the backhand, there's going to be that moment where we can't really see it, especially the more powerful we get. So I think keeping your head forward for as long as you can, and then as that shoulder reaches back, it kind of brings your eyes back to almost perpendicular to the target, just like your feet. And you can still almost see it in the peripherals if you were to sit there and pause and focus on it, but really not letting your head kind of turn back too early, I think is, is important for accuracy and just being more, more uh, just consistent, especially hitting gaps on a course like this. You want to see that target as long as you can, and then let your shoulders turn your head back and also bring it back through again. That's a great point. Um, another reason why your footwork is so important, because we can't look at our target, we have to trust that our footwork is correct towards our target. And the more you work on that, the easier it will be to hit lines. Yeah. Um, okay, so. There are three main things that I like to go over for the actual pull through or the throw of the shot. The first one is where you're actually getting the disc to come when you reach back. And the main reason we focus on that is rounding. Who ha who's heard of rounding? Most people know what rounding is. Okay, so if you haven't heard of rounding, essentially what's happening is a lot of people bring the disc back here and then they round the disc around their body. See that huge arc I create? And a lot of people lose a lot of accuracy and distance. The reason we lose accuracy is if I'm rounding, I could be letting the disc go here, 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 and now my spray is like this. You could be coming out one day throwing bullets every, because you're letting go of the disc at the right time every single time, and the next day you come out, you're one over there, one over there, one's over there, and you don't know what's going on. Usually that's what's happening is the disc just isn't coming out of your hand at the exact same time, and no wonder because it's really hard to do. So to try and get rid of that, the, the when we leave the disc behind or we reach it back, again, we don't like the term reach back because we're kind of just leaving it there. We want the disc to be either straight back or out in front of us a little bit, okay? Somewhere in here. Not here, not here, not here, right here. 
because we want to be able to pull it on a straight line, okay? <clears throat> so the next thing to focus on once we get to this point is we want to pull it on that straight line, right? So to do that, we have to pull it in towards our chest right here. The more we can pull into our chest, the faster we can rotate. Connor brought up a good point before uh, for like a ice skater. When you see them do their um, twirl, when they bring everything in really tight, the, the more they bring it in, the tighter they spin, right? It's the same concept. The more we can get the disc in towards our body, the faster we can actually accelerate it, the faster we can spin, okay? So this is gonna feel weird for you guys when you guys go out and we, you actually try this. I want you to try and hit yourself in the chest, right? I wanna pull this disc into here. Our chest gets out of the way at the very last second. So try and hit yourself in the chest as best you can. And if you do it, congratulations, that's really hard to do. But it will be easier to work your way back. Does that make sense? Okay. So focus on that as best you can and also keep this in mind. When you pull to your chest, we want to drive our elbow right here. Okay. We don't want to, we don't want it to come backwards. Okay. We want it to come out in front of us and then unhinge. If you watch Paul Macbeth, Paige Pierce, Drew Gibson, and you, you, you do frame by frame, you'll see that their elbow goes past their knee. See this? My elbow goes past my knee and I'm keeping it on this plane for as long as I can until my body physically can't and then it unravels, okay? If we pull, our, if we pull this in too early, right? So if I'm throwing this way, I'm keeping it here and I pull my, my elbow in too early here, I just created this little micro round right here is what I like to call it, okay? And we still have to let go at the right point. It limits our cone of air but it doesn't limit it as much as we could. Do you think that to that? No. Okay. Um, any questions about that? Slow footwork, timing, try to be smooth. Don't try to throw far, okay? Distance will come, all right? Uh, is there any specific problems anybody is having right now, like where the disc is going? Do you, who throws up a lot? Anybody throw up a lot? Okay. So. I see this a lot, I, especially when people are first starting, they throw up in the air and the disc kind of like pitters out and falls off, right? So what usually is happening is when we first start, we're, we're running up to the tee pad and we start to lean back. When we lean back, the trajectory of the disc goes up. So if I'm running up and I lean back, the disc is just gonna go up. So to try and combat that, try and get a little bit more weight on that front foot, okay? A little bit more weight on the front foot. We'll get it nice and level. That's how we actually work angles on hills. If I'm throwing uphill, I lean back. You can like put your arms out to like see where your angle is going to be. I lean back. If I'm throwing downhill, I try to lean forward just a little bit. And that's how I get that more downward angle. Now, the other thing I like to go over, who knows what a hyzer versus an anhyzer is? Who, who, I'm so, who does not know what that is? What an anhyzer, or, okay. so. Uh, for disc golf terminology, a hyzer, if you're a right-handed, backhanded player like I am, a hyzer is when the disc comes out like this, okay? And goes up and dies down to the left. An anhyzer is the opposite. So the disc comes out like this, okay? So disc golf is um, very creative in that way that we get to use and manipulate discs to get around trees using those angles. But you have to learn those angles, right? You can't just rely on a disc to do the work itself. So the way we get that is with our hips. We don't actually use our wrist much. This is too much of a variable. We want a simple hinge um, point, which would be our hips. So this is a hyzer down here. I do my same throw, exactly the same as if I'm right here. Now I'm just down here. And by opposite, an anhyzer right here. So if, I'm, if I wanna throw a hyzer, I lean down, hyzer. Okay, if I want to throw an anhyzer, I lean back, anhyzer. Okay? Now that's something you can work on the field. My suggestion to you is once you get that nice, clean, flat throw, go to a field, take all your discs, throw them all on a hyzer, lean over, throw them all on a hyzer, throw them all flat, throw them all on an anhyzer, see what they all do, learn them. I think, I think in anhyzer. order to match the backhand, that's really important. That not yeah. only can you throw your flat stock release and let the disc do what it's intended to, but also there's going to be shots, especially on some of these wooded courses where they're really specific, where 
I need to throw this hyzer, but it needs to be with a disc that if I throw flat, it's probably gonna turn right because I need this hyzer to start off steep and then kind of get up to flat and then finish yeah. left. So there's gonna, being able to manipulate your disc to do what you want as well as to throw them flat and have them do what they want, I think is, are both really important for kind of mastering the backhand. Any Absolutely. questions left though? And we, we, can, we can use certain discs to hit certain, certain shots, like he said. Like if I need a disc to go right, I don't necessarily have to get a disc that I can throw on this Anheuser Flex, right? I can use a disc that is really understable and I'm used to it going way left and I can throw it on that hyzer and let it flip up and ride. And on a course like this with so many steep angles, you throw in an uphill shot, you're gonna to need to go to a more understable disc. You're throwing downhill, you might wanna go more overstable, especially if you get the nose down. So it's really good to have, have mastery of all the angles as well as be able to use your disc for what they wanna do. That's a good question. He's asking if you should essentially like purposely open up your foot as you're throwing. So if you're, if you're doing your hard throw through, honestly, man, you wanna keep this in as much as you can. And then once you start to come here, it'll naturally unravel and, and rotate. So I say don't focus on it. Um, the best thing to do is to videotape yourself from the side like this. If I'm throwing that way, videotape yourself and take a look at all those parts. And you'll probably find that your foot will naturally open up. Okay? Yeah, I think you wanna focus on just making sure the disc is coming through on, the, on that straight line. And then as you go fast, yeah like, yeah, like you said, your body will just open up for it. So you don't have to as much focus on like spinning as the same time it's coming through as just pull it through straight. And then it'll kind of lead you through. Yeah. Cool. Any other, that was a great question. Any other questions? Um, I think it's it's kind of like almost stomping down and getting a little bit of forward momentum and then you're pushing a little bit through with the back too. So it does have a little bit of, it's kind of stomping and like you're stopping that little bit of forward momentum it has because it, it is getting pushed into a little bit since you're moving forward. But I think most yeah. of the push is going to come off that back leg. I call, I call it a brace foot. You need to, you need to have an anchor point. If you're, if you're throwing like this, there's no anchor point. You essentially only get this much power and you can't really get a lot like that. So you need to anchor yourself and then that's when the pull through comes. It's almost okay? like, you, but you do almost push into it and it almost like pushes against you as you, th as you throw to, to load that power into it before you come through. Yeah. Awesome. Oh shoot. Killing people. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, absolutely. If you guys have any questions at any point, we will both be over at the tables. Oh, my name's Dan Brooks Wells. And I'm nice Connor O'Reilly. Nice to meet you. What's nice your name? You. Lisa. Awesome. Connor. Welcome. Connor O'Reilly. Yes, sir. Okay. And I don't really know why. You don't know why? It's like anytime I have a tunnel shot, I yeah. throw a four. 